You only get one chance to make a good first impression, and these games kind of failed. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 worst video game prologues. Hey man! For this list, we're glancing at video games throughout history to find those most unfulfilling, drawn out, or mis-aimed introductory sequences, opening scenes, and even first levels. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? To be clear, a bad prologue does not reflect the overall quality of the game in question. In fact, a lot of these games were amazing overall, but it doesn't excuse the painful slogs of the first hour or so. On that note, we're excluding games of overwhelmingly poor quality. Those games you can find on our list of the top 10 worst video games of all time. How about a kiss for luck? You've got to be kidding. Number 10, Xenoblade Chronicles X. New LA was our beautiful lie to ourselves. Truth is, we were adrift, heading into the unknown. For a game that's eager to flaunt its beautiful world and awesome giant robots, it's also eager to play hard to get with these things. Oh yeah, work it baby! Mm -mm -mm. The game starts with your silent avatar being found in a life pod, with your first task being to get to the human colony city of New Los Angeles. Recognize the habitat unit? That's where we're headed. However, once you eventually get to NLA, the pace comes to a screeching halt as the game gives you a 40-minute sightseeing tour of the city, with your character being lucky to move 10 feet before another cutscene triggers. Day or night, the best and only bargains on the planet. We get that Chronicles X is a game with a lot of features to manage, but this could have been handled way better. In any case, I'm sure this is all a lot to digest. You'll be wanting some time. Number 9, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. <laughs> Tutorials need sharp pacing, lest the player loses interest early on. Sadly, this is an issue faced by The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, and one that could have been deemed a misfire. The hell now? Starting out, the player, as the hero Link, is put through a series of tutorials for the game's mechanics. Sword fighting, fishing, horseback riding, and even a lengthy sequence as a wolf. <laughs> Only after several hours does Link obtain his iconic tunic and commence his adventure in earnest. But even then, players have to finish the first dungeon before they can explore the world of Hyrule. <laughs> Number 8, The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings. Shut it, he's in chains, can't do a thing. Am I right, Master Geralt? <laughs> There's building up a difficulty curve, and then there's throwing people headfirst into a challenge. In the prologue of The Witcher 2, the monster hunter Geralt is forced to recount his role in King Foltest's siege on a castle. In theory, this would have been an exciting taste of the gameplay, but in execution, it quickly turns into an unnecessary chore. True enough. But no massacre, no misguided heroism will change that. The player has to progress through several parts of the siege, not having had more than a brief sequence of combat training beforehand. Truth be told, I'd rather sit here than risk my neck on those walls. Add in particularly fierce enemy fighters, and you have a rough introduction. The worst part of all is that all of this is a barrier of entry for a really amazing game. You're a witcher. You'd endure much. You better believe it. Number 7, Okami. Sometimes, small things can lead to great frustration. Such is the case for Okami, an action-adventure game about the sun goddess Amaterasu appearing in wolf form to rid the world of darkness. When the game was originally released on PS2, it featured a lengthy, unskippable opening cutscene that explains the nature of the world and the game's backstory in plentiful detail, lasting about 20 minutes. That may have been excusable had the audience not been subsequently greeted with the characters making sort of chattering noises in their voice dialogue. Not exactly the best narrative decision right there. Number 6, The Ren and Stimpy Show, Time Warp. Hey, it's Ren and Stimpy in a game that features time travel. What more could you want? Well, actually being able to travel in time here is an insane challenge. The opening to Time Warp has the titular duo hunting down proofs of purchase tickets to get the time machine. There's just one issue. If Ren and Stimpy don't collect 47 million of these items before the end of the second level, it's game over for the player. While that actual number translates into collecting just 65 tickets thanks to in-game jokes, the fact that this isn't conveyed until after you collect that quota certainly puts off players from the whole affair. 
Number five, Assassin's Creed 2. I'm surprised to see you here. I thought the Patsy hired others to do their dirty work. While the opening to Assassin's Creed 3 might drag on, this feels more frustrating. After a well-directed opening scene introducing gamers to Ezio Auditore and his brother Frederico, the promise for greatness was set. The best may it never change. And may it never change us. Said promise was soon tempered, though, by the slow burn nature of Ezio's acceptance into the Assassin's Order, with the signature blade only becoming available after a traumatic event. What do you mean? Explain! And even then, Ezio, and by extension the player, is drip-fed tools and weapons for hours afterwards, taking up several of the game's 12 core memory sequences. Stay safe, Ezio. Stay vigilant. I suspect the road ahead is yet long. Number 4. Ikari Warriors 2 – Victory Road Slight though its issues may be, this game's intro never ceases to irritate. First released in the arcades, Ikari Warriors 2 opens shortly after the events of the first game, with heroic duo Paul and Vince sent thousands of years into the future. Anyone playing the NES port of the game, though, may find their patience worn out within seconds, and take a guess why. Yes, this is the exact pace of Victory Road's introductory dialogue, and Morse code-esque noises ring out each time a letter appears on screen? We were not amused. Number 3. Kingdom Hearts 2 You look happy, Roxas. Do not. Simple and clean, this is not. Gamers playing Kingdom Hearts 2 were likely surprised to find themselves starting the game as Roxas, rather than hero Sora. Sora, don't ever change. Surprise turned to frustration, though, as the game's prologue had Roxas go through the lengthy string of completing various jobs and mundane tasks to establish the broader narrative. The few hours spent wandering around Twilight Town, up until the game proper commences, come across as padding of the most blatant sort. So, how about this? We all go to the beach! While Roxas' story does have a more heartbreaking conclusion, taking almost three hours to get there is hardly an enthralling introduction. Have you ever been this ticked off before in your life? Because I haven't. Nuh uh. Never. Number 2. Driver. Ah! Developed by Reflections Interactive, this acclaimed driving game has a rough start. You're dropped immediately into the first mission, in which the goal is to perform car stunts for gangsters in a parking garage. If that wasn't enough, the game neglects to provide a clear idea of how to perform said stunts, and the player has 60 seconds to pull each of them off. You the man! While we imagine a given player's attempts to figure out how to do these maneuvers would be stressful enough, the game adds insult to injury by having the gangsters berate you for failure each time. Hey, man. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Yeah, that is the official story, but only an idiot believes the official story. You always expect the worst. I suppose you've heard the rumors then. Well, I'm afraid they're quite true. Number one, Final Fantasy 13. Hey, that wasn't like a challenge now, all right? Few games demand such immense trust and dedication on the player's part so early on. And yet, Final Fantasy 13 appears to strive for that, tossing players into the world of Cocoon before leading them along a string of linear areas. I'll go with you. What? For many hours and several chapters, you're greeted by tutorial after tutorial that sluggishly reveal the complexities of the game's leveling, combat, and role mechanics. By the way, you want to rearrange your party? Well, you gotta wait until chapter 10, and there are only 13 chapters in the whole game. <laughs> Meanwhile, the story, chronicling six heroes of varied dispositions evading cocoon police while dealing with their status as lassie beings, delivers details in piecemeal fashion and comes across as obtuse. What's our motto? The army's no match for Nora. <laughs> that a boy. The common refrain of Final Fantasy 13 gets better after 20 hours basically proves our point for us. Oh goodness. Ooh. We did it. Do you agree with our list? Ah, but you already have the answer. What's your least favorite video game prologue? For more intriguing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. I'll come back to you. I promise. I know you will!